Are you getting an expander? What's it like? Time for some PFOing so you know where you're going. Hey everybody, we are in McKinney and Anna, Texas, your local orthodontist, and we are talking about expanders today. Got a patient who is wonderful and has been going through the expander journey. We're gonna introduce you to her and talk about her experience in the expander. So hopefully you've got some questions and we answer them for you. Let's go find her. Where are you? <laughs> so one of the major reasons why we do expanders, at least on the top, is to correct cross bites in the back. Sometimes you bite down, and the kiddos, they're like biting to the side. It can be because you have a small jaw, which you know sometimes happens when you're a kid. Maybe you've got a thumb sucking habit and it causes your upper jaw to squeeze down over time. Or another major reason why we in our office use expanders is to create space for other teeth that are trying to come in, permanent teeth. So usually in our office, we're doing an expander somewhere between eight and 10. The younger you are, the more predictable the movement is, right? You can actually get bone changes. It's not that you can't get changes when we're older, sometimes it just requires more pressure and it's a little bit less predictable. We're just not sure. So younger uh, to a certain point can be better. So that's an expander. Let me introduce you to my friend here. Here she is. Hi, my name is Annalise. That was a great introduction. <laughs> that was that was very good. You seem very confident. In, oh, 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 she's very confident in front yes. of the video. So anyways, Annalise had expanders, all right? She's had one expander on the top. Then we also, in our office, we sometimes will do a bottom expander, helps with space, but also keep the top and the bottom coordinated, meaning that you spread the top out and then we spread the bottom out just a little bit too. So spacing and coordination. We started the top first, we got into the bottom. Here's some pictures of what her expander looks like, some of the changes. We're gonna show maybe what the teeth look like before. In this case, at least we created a little bit of extra space for some of our teeth that are developing. Again, one of the reasons why we create space is our permanent canines. Sometimes they come in and they're really wonky and we wanna try and help them get into position. So before we move too far along this process, we're gonna ask Annalise a few questions. Here we go. Question number one. What was it like to get the expander? Do you remember that day? Was that a good day or was that a super hard day? Um, it was good and hard because I couldn't really pronounce words. But mm. then like on the second day, I kind of got better and better. And then like... That's a really good point. Can we stop there for a second? So mm -hmm. so you said it was kind of hard to speak. Yeah. Why was it hard to speak? Um, Do you because, know why? No, I don't. <laughs> it was just hard because guess what you got in the top of your mouth? An expander. And our design, there's different designs. Ours has some acrylic and it basically takes up your tongue space and so it's harder to speak. It's harder to speak. It's so hard to form a sentence right now. But did you hear what she said? She got better. How did you get better? Did you just talk a lot? Yeah. Do you like to talk? Yes. Talk okay, so <laughs> that helps if you like to talk a lot. And or some people like to read out loud. Just speaking will help your tongue adapt to the smaller space because of the expander. Okay, so that was one of the reasons why it was hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else you remember about that day? Um, Why was it a good day? Was it a good day? Yeah. Why was it a good day? Because I got a frosty. Oh. <laughs> so expanders may be the quickest way to get a frosty. Yep, I'm writing it down now. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Anything else about that day you remember? It was kind of hard to eat. Okay, so a little different to eat. Mm -hmm. You ate a frosty. Yeah. <laughs> Did you eat anything else? I, anything that was e the easy to eat? Um, I don't know oh. where it was, but it was kind of like a potato and it was mushy, so it was easy. Like mashed potatoes? Yeah. Okay, those are mushy potatoes. Okay, so mashed potatoes are good. So then we started our journey where we do what we call the turns. When you yeah. hear that word, what do you, do you cringe at all? Does it make you like nervous when you hear turns? Yeah. Just a little bit. What are the turns? Tell us about the turns. Um, There's like this little key that you have to turn. Okay. So it kind of like widens the teeth and makes it a little bit more straight. And that's, that's all I remember. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So we got the little blue, ours is a little blue key. It's got a little mm -hmm. poker and you stick it into the hole of the expander and you rotate it and that causes the expander to spread apart. What were those like? What were the turns like? Why did it make you nervous? Um, Because it was like, it didn't really hurt, but like it widened me, like <laughs> it widened <laughs> my teeth out, which was like a little nerve wracking. Because? Like I didn't know what was going on, but then as I did it more, I knew what was happening, okay, so it was okay. easier. So did you feel pressure when they did the widening? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah so well. that's exactly what's happening. You need to know when we do the turns, we're trying to make the expander wider and it spreads out your teeth, right? Makes more space or corrects cross bites, it's changing the bone on top. And you are gonna feel pressure, right? Mm -hmm. How long did you feel the pressure? Was it like for a really long time or is it just like first day or right when it happened and then it went away? What was it like? It was like for like a week and then, you know, it was like just the first day. Okay, yeah. so so we in our office for Annalise, we did turns every day on top. One turn every day. 
mm -hmm. right? So when they did that turn, did you feel a lot of pressure at that point? And did you feel it and then it went away real fast or did it stay the whole time? Um, I felt pressure for like 10 seconds and then it went away. Look at that, 10 seconds. That's not very long. So a little bit of pressure at the beginning because we're putting the pressure on, right? That makes sense, pressure because you put pressure on. Mm -hmm. And then it goes away in like 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. So we did several turns. We probably did upwards of 28 turns. We made the expander really wide. You can see the space in between the two colored pieces is really big. You can see a lot of the screw in the pictures. There's some ways that you can know that the expander is working right. One is that the space in between the two colored pieces is getting wider. Sometimes people get a gap in between their front teeth. Did you get a gap? Do you remember getting a gap between your front teeth? Um, no. Not really? Uh, yeah, I don't think, but kind of, yeah. Okay, so sometimes you get a gap, sometimes you don't, but a gap right in the middle of your teeth may be normal when you're doing the expander. I love what she said about eating. You might need to eat softer foods and practice, right? Mm -hmm. The diet might need to be a little bit different until you can get used to chewing with the expander in and uh, there will be some pressure. Usually the pressure goes away pretty fast. So if you get some soreness right through here, you complain of like pressure right there, that's probably normal because the expander is pushing in that whole area. Okay, well, what about cleaning the expander? What was that like? How did you clean the expander? Did you just do normal? Did you use a squirt gun? Did you? I used a squirt gun like to clean Wait, it. Wait, really? On... You used a squirt gun? Yeah, I think so, yeah. A squirt gun? I don't know, but like <laughs> it squirted um, some... water into my mouth. Okay, yeah. okay. And then like it cleaned it, I think, and then you just lost it. <laughs> yeah. We just lost it. The squirt gun? Yeah. Some good ideas for cleaning. You definitely should still brush. Yeah, that's right. what I do. Still brush. And some people like to use the water pick and they squirt the water in, kind of like a water gun. You kind of squirt through there and it spreads, or you can rinse out with water. Some people use like the floss threaders. It looks like the little needle thing and then they put the floss on it and that. that's kind of tricky though. So my son, when he gets stuff out of his mouth, he just not necessarily the best technique, especially yeah. if you're out in public. <laughs> anyway, so cleaning is important. You can figure that out. There's some good techniques, water pick, brushing. Also, the diet, be ready for a different, slightly different diet, at least at first. And then there's definitely gonna be some pressure when you do the turns, but it gets better. Did you ever have to take any medicine for it? Did it ever no. bother you that much? Not that no. you're aware of? It didn't bother me that much. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you were gonna tell somebody about getting expander, is there any other advice that you would give them? Don't really eat caramel or anything because it gets stuck and then you're going to do it and then my mom's like don't do that <laughs> so watch out for the caramel. Okay, yeah. very nice. At least it was great talking with you. Now I'm gonna ask dad just a few questions, okay? All right, good sir. What was your experience with the expander? You didn't have the expander in your mouth, but you had a child with the expander. I had a child with the expander and it was an interesting experience. The biggest <laughs> thing I would say, pro tip number one pro is tip number one. when the kids eat, they take out the expander and Annalise's problem was she would like to wrap it up in a paper towel. Good idea. Probably should have used a little plastic case it came with because the problem was, unfortunately, that thing got thrown away a couple of times. And we were able to find it each time, but it kind of caused a little bit of uh, some chaos in the house, if you will. Uh, so definitely make sure that you're keeping track of your expander and not to wrap it up in a paper towel when you're eating. Okay, that was actually really good advice. We didn't talk too much about that. We did mention that we do upper and lower expanders sometimes. And in our office, when we do a lower expander, we traditionally use one that you can take in and out. Like, it looks like a retainer. It has the same screw and you can turn it and you can take it in and and out of your mouth. And so one of the risks definitely is that you can lose it if you're not careful. The wrapping in the paper towel, that's a classic. And you're exactly right. Make sure you got a case, try to carry it around with you all the time and put your expander in the case so that you're not tempted to wrap it up. That was good advice. Anything else? <laughs> that's really about it. She was a champ with it. You know, a little bit of adjustment at the beginning, but she got used to it and um, it was all good. They really have done great. We are expanded and uh, expanders can be great tools. They're very common in the orthodontic profession. And uh, depending on what your needs are, you may benefit from expansion. And this is a little bit of what the journey is like. So if you liked hearing from us, give the video a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, if you come to McKinney or Anna, Texas, maybe you'll get to see on please. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we've got. Just a little PFOing so you know where you're going. Packard and Annalise out. <laughs>